2 Timothy 3 verse 12, the Bible says that all that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Um, as Christians, our lot on this earth consists of trials of difficulty. And oftentimes we view these trials as God's displeasure towards us. Trials aren't that thing that people desire to have in their life. Right, because trials, I mean, trials are difficult to sustain, whether it be the loss of people, whether it be people just attacking you, right? Struggling with certain financial difficulties or social difficulties. Maybe it's a disease you may have. Just that thorn in the flesh that just keeps picking at us. And trials are not really a pleasurable thing. And in the life of Jesus, there was no advantage that he had when it came to trials jesus became a human being and so when jesus would face trials he could not lighten the trials or alleviate himself from the weight of the trials he had to face them fully and you could imagine that as jesus satan is giving you no breaks whatsoever you know you're the savior of the world you're gonna get great pressure from satan because if you complete your mission, then my kingdom is going to be wrecked. Satan knows this. And so, of course, he's attacking Jesus with every single ounce, iota of power that he has. But in James chapter 1 and verse 2 and 3, the Bible says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. That word temptations also means trials. Why? Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That as your faith is being tried, you are learning how to endure. You are learning how to keep being patient, to keep waiting upon the Lord who will come. And at the end of your trial, give you victory. At the end of your trial, give you that peace that you need. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, Cast not away your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward, for you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And so as Christians, though we will suffer persecution on this earth, it does not end with suffering. The Bible tells us that if we suffer with Christ, we shall also be glorified with him. But I believe another aspect of trials that God wants us to hone in on, that God wants us to appreciate and grasp, is that when we go through trials, it is because God desires us to try him. Our trials are opportunities for us to try God. In what way? To try his promises. To hold fast to his promises. Trials are opportunities for us to hold fast to the word of God. To hold fast to what he has said instinctively to go to the word of God as a refuge for confidence so that even though we're sustaining these difficult trials we can have hope and assurance that yes I'm suffering right now but God will keep me and not only this but with the comfort that we can find in the word of God God enables us after we sustain and overcome in these trials to encourage and comfort others who are going through the same thing. I want to read for you 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. This is what Paul says. He says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Why? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. God is styled the God of comfort. So that now when we are in those trials, God seeks to comfort us. God seeks to give us peace amidst the storm. So that now when there are others who are going through the same or similar storms that we are going through, we can give those people encouragement of what God is able to do for them in that immediate moment because of what he has done for us when we were in those storms. And so 
God enables you to be a source of comfort to someone else who's going through trials. This is why when we go through trials, yes, it may be difficult. Yes, it may be very grievous to sustain. But it is also an opportunity for us to testify on behalf of the goodness of God. To show how good he is and that irrespective of my circumstance now, I can be comforted with the promises of the word of God. You know, I've had times where I drew comfort from people who went through certain circumstances that I find myself going through. And they would say, okay, this is how I went through. This is how I overcame. And this is even the purpose of the life of Christ. See, Jesus suffered for us. Just because Jesus was a man of sorrows and of suffering does not mean that he was sad all the time. It doesn't mean that under the weight of trial and tribulation that he was always sorrowful. When Jesus suffered trials, he overcame. And the Bible says that in that Jesus had suffered being tempted, he is able to help and secure to assist those who also are tempted. And so, yes, though trials may be difficult, understand that it is also an opportunity for you to be a witness of the goodness of God. And understand that even though you're suffering trials, this is not the end. God does not give us trials to destroy us, but to refine us and to purify us and to make us more like him. We can trust and believe that as we are going through certain trials and circumstances, God is with us still. That God has not forsaken us and that God seeks to use us to be a testimony of how good he is through certain trials so that we can be comforters, motivators, sources of encouragement to those who are sustaining the same things. And so I don't know what trial you're going through in life right now. I don't know what thing the devil is throwing at you. But understand that in your trials, God is there for you to hold fast to. God is a refuge a very present help in trouble. That means he's there immediately. And you can hold on to him for security, for strength, for stability of spirit, for comfort. And when you are comforted, go comfort your brethren.